Um, my name is Michelle Kim, and I'm a UX designer at Scanwell Health, located in downtown LA. But now, not really. <laughs> We're located in different parts of Los Angeles County and Anaheim. Uh, I graduated from Art Center College of Design, and I'd like to say I'm, I like to think in systems, and one really good example that came to my mind <clears throat> to just get the message across was how I tried to implement an annual hackathon making curriculum at our school so that students can come together with administrators and teachers to solve problems that they've been having for years. And then the students would make the hackathon, they would host the hackathon, and then they would actually iterate and find solutions they could prototype. And so that's just like one example of how systems thinking has kind of coursed through my blood. And that naturally led me to Scanwell. Scanwell also has a very strong foundation in systems thinking. And let me explain how that happens. It's, there's this assumption in the US that for health related tasks, you have to go to the doctor or the nurse to solve anything or to ask any question. And we realized that there's actually a moment or specific moments within your health journey which for everyone should be throughout your whole life, you should be thinking about your health. But we noticed that there's these very specific parts of your journey that we could substitute so that you would not have to go to the doctors or physically be there. And that area that we identified were, was at-home diagnostics. And so the very first product that we actually launched two years ago was a UTI kit or urinary tract infection test kit that you can do in the comfort and safety and convenience of your home. And it would usually take around two minutes. And this uh, product that we created really has a lot of similar notes to the current COVID-19 test kit that we are making. And how that is, or what the reasons why there's that overlap is because first we created a UX foundation, or as I like to call it, kind of a UX product Bible of sorts, a living Bible, as in it constantly, it's going to keep changing and be hopefully improved. Um, within this exercise that we did with the team a couple months ago, we actually have a lot of different products in the pipeline. So think about other diseases, which I can't reveal, but think of other diseases that are very common out there in the world and in healthcare. Uh, we are definitely tackling those, but I realized that we didn't have a good picture of how we were actually going to strategically implement all of those different tests into our flow. And so we did a brainstorm where we looked at um, the different user groups, the goals that we envisioned for each product. And then we actually created, oh, sorry. We created a, a user flow that could be applied to all the different tests. And this one right here is just like a breakdown of, of one test specifically, this one being the UTI test. And the other reason why we were well suited or we were somewhat more prepared to address the COVID problem was because we have a very lean process. We're a team of 12 full-time employees uh, working very fast. And we, this is one example where we had a specific problem with how users were onboarding our UTI product and engineers and design team and the R&D side, we work very closely together and very simultaneously and we iterate very rapidly. The third reason is because of uh, the physical and digital uh, requirements of a test like this. I know this sounds very abstract right now and I'm going to get to what the heck the, the test kit is very soon, but just to let you know that test kits like this require both having these physical components, things that you're touching uh, in the real world and also a digital side that's guiding you through since you're not going to have a doctor or nurse with you. And we've had experience with having to manufacture R&D packaging and also the digital side, putting all that together. And so all this allowed us to create an IgM slash IgG rapid serology test. And for those who don't know what this is, which even for me, I had to uh, review quite a lot because it's very sciencey. What happens when you have the coronavirus is there's these two antibodies in your, in your blood called IgM and IgG, and they start varying in terms of how much you have those antibodies inside that's trying to fight the virus. And so our test is identifying, hey, in day two, day 10, day 15, how many of those antibodies 
exist inside your body. And obviously that's a way to confirm whether or not you have or have had the coronavirus. And I broke this down even more because people are probably like, okay, that's very, that sounds also very conceptual. So uh, what the user journey would look like, the first step overarching user journey, obviously is the onboarding process or where you unbox. And so when you open the packaging, you'll have these sorts of items. Um, obviously not all of it is set in stone yet, but generally these are the things you're going to have. You're going to have some kind of device that would pierce, poke your skin. Oh, and just to let you know, there is going to be blood in this presentation. So if you're squeezy about that, just look away. I'll let you know when it's happening, if I can remember. And then you're going to have a device that actually withdraws the blood because if not, it gets really messy. If you're literally trying to dab your finger to the test kit, which is in this pouch. So those are kind of generally what's going to happen. And then obviously we have to log in to the app. Uh, the second step is capturing the blood. And that requires, again, a lancet of some sort and a collection tube. And then the third step is where you have to then dispose of the blood into the test cassette. And you need, if you just pour the blood in, it's not going to flow up physics wise. And so that's why you also have to put in this buffer, or they also like to call it diluent. And when you do that, the, the uh, blood should be coursing upwards and that's when you can scan the test. This takes roughly around 13 minutes. And for every rapid test, if you, for example, if you look at malaria, theirs takes around 15 minutes. The UTI test, which is urine based, takes two minutes. This one specifically, unfortunately, does require that you wait for 13 minutes for it to be validated. It's just all based on science restrictions and not because we intentionally set it to that time. And so that's what the product is. And now I'll tell you where we're at in terms of how much we have been able to build um in just the past two weeks because really i started working on this three weeks ago <laughs> and also note that things are changing very rapidly so what i'm showing now could vastly change in the next day or a week later but hopefully it doesn't the first week what we did sorry it's so chaotic but we conducted internal team testing so we sent out test kits or as close as we can get it to the real thing to all of our team members because we were trying to figure out the perfect lancet that would produce the right amount of blood with the least amount of pain for the user because we do understand that a lot of people have never really had to poke themselves with the lancet before and because of that fear of the unknown we wanted to make sure there were enough safeguards that you can do this even if you're all by yourself and the other component that was really tricky was this blood collection tube. Um, people don't really understand how to put it in. It's, it just like sucks in, but I'll, I'll show you later how that works. And then from that, we narrow down, okay, I think this Lancet and this collection tube works well together with this amount. And so then what we did, actually, this was yesterday, I went out and did uh, four usability tests. And even just four it completely exhausted me because yes, I was in this getup. <laughs> I had no idea how tiring it would be when you have to be in this type of uh, uniform. And the, this is kind of, this will probably give you a pretty good idea of what the interview consisted of. Uh, we were really trying to identify the major pain points in the user journey. We have theories, we have assumptions like most people do, but we wanted to validate if those assumptions were true and also rate the success level of how many people were able to complete a sp specific task. And then from this, once it's filled out, which we have filled out, um, we're going to then prioritize specific problems we've identified into solutions that are most achievable based on the limitations of our resources and our time. And just to let you know, the prototype we have is actually the high fidelity working version of the app. We use it with test flight um, and the, one of the reasons why is because this user journey or this product is so complex that if you try to do something like this on Envision, where it doesn't have scanning camera capabilities, um, GIF capabilities, you'll see why we need the GIFs later. Um, it makes it really hard for us to really gauge valuable insights into whether or not the product is going to work for the user. And the main challenges ahead that we have that I will definitely be focusing on in the next two weeks are 
of course, usability testing because the sample size was so small. It definitely, it was qualitative and we want to lean more towards quantitative. And um, the other portion is the fact that UTIs, when I was working on that, it was definitely much more narrow in terms of the user base where we were primarily focused on women who are 20s to 40s. But this specific product is trying to address the needs of many different types of users from different age groups with different health uh, abilities. And so that does uh, bring about more challenges. And so if anyone would like to talk about um, different scrappy or innovative ways to test and also how we can quickly um, improve the accessibility side of our designs, I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, if this is not the right time, I'd love to do follow up virtual coffee chats or whatnot, uh, just to get your thoughts, because this is, we're definitely a small team. And so any insights from people are welcome. And let me show you, I think I have a, a little bit more time. Sorry if I sound like I'm talking really fast, which I am, because <laughs> I want to make sure I got through this real quick. Uh, I'll show you this one. This is kind of one of our most updated designs of the app. So pretend you just signed in and uh, you have to do a QR code because that's how we identify which test you have. And then there's an overview screen. And then this is the beginning of your, the steps or the instructions. This is like the overview screen of what's going to happen because we identified that users were very afraid when they couldn't predict what was going to happen in the test. And then we encourage they wash their hands. We tell them lay it all out so it's organized and easy for them to understand since a lot of people have probably never touched a Lancet or this device or this pouch before. And then this design is based on the UX foundation that we created where we have some type of visual reference at the top and then the text and then a call to action at the bottom. And yes, I don't know how much I should show you, but basically this is the first version of our working prototype. And this is demonstrating how to open the Lancet. We definitely need to work on the copy and the size of the subtitles. That's something we're trying to expand. Uh, we are also considering very seriously sound because we realize that for users who's never done this before, they, uh, will get very distracted focusing on what they're holding in person versus looking at the phone. Instead of looking at the phone first and then copying the action, it's a little too complicated. And so we think sound can be a great way for them to um, have that like safeguard or that backup plan just in case they miss a specific step. And then let me see if I can show you, they wipe the blood, they put in the blood in the test cassette. Uh, pouring the blood, the diluent, two drops. Then they have to put it on our scan card. That helps us read the results. And then there's a timer screen that gives them educational content on what's going on. And then once the timer screen is done, they'll be able to scan the card. And then that's the end. And I think that's everything.